My name is Gary Jam, and many of you may know me as the former Worcester Police Chief, where I spent 12 years serving the community in that capacity. I also spent a total of 33 years as a police officer with the city of Worcester. And throughout my career, I had the opportunity to work in many areas of the police department, including as an investigator and a commander of the sexual assault unit, the domestic violence unit, and as a rape investigator. And all of that experience I brought to writing my first novel, Margaret Stubb. Margaret Stubb was the winner of the Benjamin Franklin Award of the Independent Book Publishers Association Silver Medal for the best first novel. And I'm very proud of that accomplishment because not only was it a recognition of the effort that I put into it, but also the assistance that I received from my wife Donna and my son Michael, who was my editor. My wife Donna was the first read and we worked together every day. I would write, she would critique, we would battle as you can imagine because she had strong opinions, I had strong opinions. But in the end, the marriage held and I finished the book. So it was a good thing all around. But I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk a little bit about myself as an introduction, the process of writing, and then the book itself. And I'm also going to talk about my second novel, When Summer Turns to Fall, which is quite different from my first novel in the sense that When Summer Turns to Fall is really just a, is a romance. It's a romance. Uh, it's an upbeat, happy book. Uh, it's, it's driven by a mystery, and it's it's completely different than Margaret Stubb. Margaret Stubb is a romance, but it's also a complicated book, which we'll get into. First of all, my, my career, like I said, spans 33 years, and I was fortunate enough to have a great career with the city of Worcester, and I have tremendous gratitude uh, for the opportunity, as well as the opportunity to serve the city of Worcester. I grew up on Grafton Hill, and um, you could probably tell by my accent because most people think Grafton Hill and our accent is a little bit from a foreign country, but believe it or not, it's not. It's part of Worcester and, and a great part of the city of Worcester. But I do have that accent, so bear with me. I spent so much time in other areas of the city of Worcester, and, and I love the city of Worcester, and I, and, it, and I think that comes out in my story because my main character in Margaret Stubb is a young man named Nicholas Avellino, who's a local kid. He's a Worcester kid. He grew up in the shadow of a fictional college called the College of Holy Trinity. And so I try to bring some of the Worcester characteristics to the story. And I also have a love for Cape Cod, and the story takes place on Cape Cod, which we will get into. I didn't uh, come to write this book by chance. It's something that I, I've wanted to do my entire life. And like many of you, I spent my, my whole life as a reader. I love to read. I, I love to read everything that I can get my hands on. Historical fiction, romance, science fiction. I just really, really uh, love to read just like many of you. And so I've always had this burning desire to write a novel, and, and I know many people do. And what I learned is that you can have this desire, but the only way it's going to take place is if you make the commitment to sit down and write every single day. And that's a challenge, but you can't do it on a part-time basis. You have to really dedicate yourself. So, again, my background in policing, but... There was also another side of Gary Jam, and that was a side who loves literature, he loves poetry, and he loves, loves to read. And I, again, like many people, I have my education, I have a bachelor's degree in history, I have a minor in English, I received a, a master's degree in business administration, and I also have a master's degree in criminal justice. So I, I, I felt that I had the background that I could accomplish my objective, which was to write a novel. And I put the time and I put the effort in. And 
before I actually sat down to write, I needed to do my homework. I always wrote in the first person, and I've written a lot of documents over the years, whether it was police reports, investigatory reports, or reports to the city council. So I didn't have a skill in writing, but I was always writing in the first person. So one of the things I knew I had to do is I knew I, I was going to write a novel that was took place, the setting was 1971, and I'd be writing in the past tense. So I really had to understand the writing process. So I reviewed six or seven books on how to write, how to write a novel. I spent months and months and months reviewing grammar, understanding the grammar, get, uh, re-educating myself on some of the basics that I learned in parochial school and then in high school. And then I took two courses from the Yale Open College and they were really helpful, both in English, both in reading. And one was the American novel since 1945 and the other was a course on Faulkner, Hemingway, and Fitzgerald. And those courses really helped me. So when I sat down to write the book, I felt I had prepared myself to write. And then I had this story, a story that I kept in my head and in my heart for well over 40 years. And again, the story began as a framework. I never sat down, I never tried to write it before, but I kept trying to build a story in my head, build the characters, how the narrative would go, what the plot was, and over the years, you know, certain things change where, for instance, one of the characters lived. Originally it would have been Southern California. I moved it to Tennessee because I spent a lot of time in Tennessee in the Nashville area. So I had a distinct um, knowledge of the area and I wanted to bring that to the book. And that's exactly, exactly what I did. And I brought a lot of Worcester to the book because like I said, growing up in the city of Worcester, I love the city of Worcester and I wanted to bring that out in the story. The type of book that I wanted to write, I, it was basically twofold. I wanted to write a book, a novel for the casual reader. Somebody that would be sitting on the beach or every evening would only have a few, you know, 10, 15 minutes where they had time and they wanted to read a novel. So I kept the chapters relatively short and I wanted the book, like I said, for the casual reader so that they could read it at their leisure and enjoy the novel. But I also wanted to challenge myself and I wanted to write a book for the critical reader. And in the novel, there's well over 32 literary devices that I use in the novel. I also wrote a complicated plot and it's, it really, it really takes place in a sense where I, I wanted to describe through the, through the narrative, through the dialogue, what was going on in 1971? Because I, I do believe 1971 was a critical year in our culture. So much was changing. People were challenging their faith institutions. We had the legacy of the Vietnam War. The economy was in trouble. A, a new term came about with regard to inflation. And so there was a lot of things going on in a, in a society that are captured in the novel. And one of the things that to me was most important is to be honest in telling the story. I had read that and I really didn't understand it until I began writing, is that you have to write as you see it with honesty. You can't sit there and say, geez, is this gonna be a problem? and change it. You have to write with honesty. And I'll give you an example. One of the things that I received some criticism on was the violence that takes place in the marriage that, Ma that Margaret, the, the main female character, was involved in. And I talked about this many times when I, when I deliver a lecture on, on the book. And I, and I did it at recently, uh, last year at the, at the Worcester 
public library where a lot of people that knew me from the police department were there and they were advocates of domestic violence. They were involved in rape investigations. And what I, what I told them is that two things that I wanted to do with the, with the book in the sense of the violence that takes place is one is I want it to be completely honest. And I also wanted to pay tribute to the early advocates, those who are on the front lines of dealing with domestic violence. And then I wanted to be honest to the victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. So there's nothing that I wrote in the novel that I didn't hear firsthand from a victim. So the violence that takes place in the book is not made up. The characters are made up, but the, but the actual incidents are real. And it really breaks my heart when I, when I read it, and it broke my heart when I wrote about it, because again, it brought back memories of when I was interviewing the, these victims and survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault. Let me just talk a little bit about the process of writing. Like I said, preparation, I sat down and I wrote the novel the novel takes place in night, between 1970 and 1972. And one of the things that I did to prepare is I essentially lived in that time period. While I was writing the book, the only music I listened to was music from the early 70s. The movies that I watched or rewatched were movies from the early 70s. The books I read were published in the early 70s. So I really wanted to put my mindset back in the 1970s. And I'll believe, believe me, I enjoyed it. One is I was a heck of a lot younger, probably a lot more handsome, if I was ever handsome, than I am today. But I really did enjoy going back and spending that much time back in, in, in my youth when, um, and the music that I enjoyed and the movies that I enjoyed. Um, the point of view of the narrator. I wanted a strong narrative voice, and that's the, what I use in the novel. It's, I use a strong narrative divorce. And there's three main uh, themes to the novel. The first is, is it's love. It's a love story. And more importantly, it's the search for the meaning of love. There's also the theme of marriage, infidelity, morality. A lot of issues that people struggled with in the early 70s, I brought, again, I brought back to the novel. The conflict, the there's an external conflict, conflict, the marriage, and Nicholas, and how, what his role is. And then there's the internal conflict, faith, the vows, and family. And so with that in mind, let me tell you a little bit about the story of Margaret Stubb. Margaret Gabriel is a young woman who grew up in Nashville, Tennessee, and had always had a passion to attend the College of Holy Trinity because that's where her father had graduated. And a lot of you may remember that in the early 70s, a lot of college did, colleges didn't open up opportunities for women. And also many families didn't wanna send their daughter to college. They really wanted to get married, raise a family and be and stay at home. And this was not what Margaret and vision for her life. She had a passion to go to the College of Holy Trinity. She saw the world as something that she wanted to embrace, she wanted to experience, but she loved her home in Tennessee. But she, again, she wanted to expand her knowledge. She wanted to meet new people, experience new things. And one of the other things that Margaret wanted to do is that she wanted to spend time on Cape Cod. She had read about Cape Cod. She had never seen the ocean. 
and she wanted to spend time on Cape Cod. Michael Avellino is quite a different character. He's a local kid, grew up in the city of Weston. He grew up in a neighborhood, very blue collar, lower middle class, you know, three death of families. People didn't go to college. They followed usually in the father's footsteps, working in factories, working in gas stations. But Michael had a talent. He had a talent in football. And he knew that was his only ticket to get to college. But he was more interested in being educated than he was in playing football. So, so Michael Avellino struggles with this. He struggles with going to college and playing football. He doesn't want to play football anymore, but he knows that if he doesn't play football, He's, he's, gonna, he's not going to be able to go to college. So he commits to football. Margaret, on the other hand, never gets to go to college because her father has a sudden illness. She's not able to leave and go to college. She's forced into a marriage very quickly that becomes a disaster. But Margaret always, in her mind, wanted to leave wanted to go to college and visit the College of Holy Trinity. And one day, on a spirited moment, and you'll read it in the novel, she took a trip to Worcester to go to the College of the Holy Trinity. Her husband at the time was on a business trip. So she flees. At the college, she meets Michael Avellino. And Michael Avellino, since boyhood, suffers from a sadness over the loss of his mother. And his only remembrance is of sitting on the beach on Cape Cod with his mother at Rock Harbor. And so Margaret and Nicholas unite, both innocent individuals. They hop in her car, they drive to Cape Cod, they spend six days on Cape Cod falling in love. And again, Margaret keeps her past from Nicholas. Nicholas has no idea that Margaret's married. They fall in love. They end up in Boston. Margaret calls her mother to say she's never coming back. But ultimately, she does go back. Nicholas Avellino's heartbroken. And again, I don't want to, I don't want to tell you everything about the story. But it gives you a sense that it's a story of a romance, two individuals struggling with their faith, one individual struggling with the violence that she's subjected to. They meet interesting characters along the way. And, and ultimately, in the end, they separate. And it's a struggle to see whether or not they'll ever be together again. And so that's the novel in summation. And, and there are there are. When I usually give talks that are live, I do take the time to read some of the more important things that I think take place in the novel. Because like I said, there are over 32 literary devices that I use. And one of the things I like to do is I like to little, talk a little bit about them. Because for instance, a big part of the book and why it's titled Margaret Stubb is the dove is a symbol. And dub is a symbol of hope, peace, and for some, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. So there is symbolism in that. And the dove plays a very important part. Or the symbol of the dove plays a very important part in the story. And if I have time, I'll be happy to go back and, and read some of, the, some of the things I usually highlight in the, in the novel. But I did want to spend some time talking about my second book, When Summer Turns to Fall. And I want to give you a little background on this. In September of 2016, or 2018 rather, I have a, a little bit of a challenge sometimes remembering dates since I retired, since every day is, is to me is freedom. but. In any event, I had given a talk at 
the, the Worcester Public Library on my book, Margaret Stubb. And it was very well attended and a lot of interaction with, with those that attended. But after my talk, I felt dehydrated, really dehydrated. And so I drank two bottles of water and I went home and I hadn't eaten. And I said to my wife, Donna, I said, geez, I, I don't really feel that well. So I said, I'm going to go to bed. So I went to bed and I woke up in the middle of the night and I knew something was seriously wrong with me. So I called, I woke up Donna and we went rush to the hospital. And within a few hours, I was diagnosed with leukemia. And, you know, obviously I, I heard of leukemia, and I, but I didn't know a lot about leukemia. So in February of, of, of uh, 2019, I had a, a bone marrow transplant. My son Matthew was my donor. And I had that on February 14th. So that was my Valentine's present from my son Matthew. He gave me his bone marrow. And I had, at this time, I had no interest in writing a second book. Even before I got sick, it was something people said, you're going to write another novel. I said, I'm not going to write another novel. I really didn't have anything in mind. I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. I wanted to write a novel, and I was happy with that. There were other things that I wanted to pursue. So again, I had my bone marrow transplant on February 14th. And on February 19th, I woke up in the morning and I had this story in my head from the beginning to the end. So five days after my, my bone marrow transplant, probably my son Matt's story, but anyways, I stole it. So anyways, I get out of bed and I only have my iPad and I write out the first couple pages and then the last chapter and I send it to my wife, Donna. And then she e emails me back and says, wow. And she was blown away. And so I started writing. I started writing through the process of recovering from my bone marrow transplant. Uh, during all the chemotherapy that I had, well, I had gotten most of my chemotherapy before that. So it was really through the process of, of my recovering from the bone marrow transplant. And again, you can imagine that I had good days and bad days like anybody who's experienced it. But I got up every day and my objective was to write, to keep writing. It gave me a purpose. It gave me a, a sense of that, you know, there, there was a day when it, I would be over this. And so it, it really helped me through the process. And again, just as an aside, the staff from, from the, the PCA, the people that provide, that clean your room, all the way up to the nurses, the doctors, everybody at UMass was tremendous. And I, I have great gratitude for what they were able to do. My wife believes that the, the, the real reason why I wrote the book was all the steroids that they were giving me uh, wound me up so much that I was able to produce another book. So one of the things that I did in this book, unlike in Margaret Stav, was I wanted to keep it simple. I wanted a fast read. I wanted a story that was driven by the narrative and the dialogue and was a romance. And it's not just a romance. It's also a mystery. It's a mystery that takes place again on Cape Cod. I love Cape Cod. And like both books, it, they, they are sort of a travelogue in the sense that I try to be very descriptive of the places that I really, really love on Cape Cod. And I try to bring that out in the novels. But when summer turns to fall, it's a, it's a novel that's driven by a mystery. It's a search for a lost painting. And the, the mystery is, takes place originally in 1869 during the great storm, the great gale called the Saxby Gale. And that the Saxby Gale is a, a true event that took place that, that took place in the Northeast to include Cape Cod. Everything else about the story is fiction. The Hotley Farm, the search for the painting, the mystery, all of that brings the two characters in this book. One is a, a 20 year uh, uh, 
veteran of the United States Navy. The other character, the female, is a is a 12 year uh, veteran of the FBI as an analyst, and the two come together in search for the novel. Rachel Morgan is the the former FBI analyst, and Michael May is the veteran of the United States Navy. And again, they meet randomly. They they join forces. They bring certain expertise in search for the Hotley painting to the, to to solve the mystery. And they, like I said, they bring different uh, skills together. And during their search for the painting and visiting the iconic sites of Cape Cod, they begin to fall in love. And at at the end, it's really a, a search to solve the mystery and to see whether. Rachel and, and, and Michael fall in love. And again, the feedback that I received on it, it's, it's a, a, a wonderful story. It's, it's an easy read. It's an upbeat story. And I think for me, recovering from leukemia, it was an opportunity to me, for me to fantasize about happier times, a happier place, places that I love. Uh, because when you have leukemia and you have a bone marrow transplant, you really live in a bubble. It's so vulnerable because your immune system. So again, both novels uh, mean so much to me. Margaret Stubb, because it's a story that I had in my head and in my heart for well over 40 years. And when summer turns to fall, Really, it was a story that I can't say it was completely my salvation, but it did give me a purpose every day to get up in the morning and write a novel. And I I know that I'm running out of time and I wish I had more time and I wish that this was live because there's so much more that I want to say. And the other thing that I love most is listening to uh, or hearing questions from the audience, and then being able to expand on the novels. So again, um, I appreciate the opportunity to do this. I can't tell you how many times I had to take one, take two, take three, like in a movie. I think I'm on take uh, take 54. Uh, and uh, I'm hoping that this product is something that you enjoy. You enjoy the opportunity uh, over the last 28, 29 minutes of me talking to you about my novels. And then I look forward to better times when I can go in person to the Worcester Senior Center and talk to you about my books or anything else that you feel you would like to ask me, the former chief of police, a writer of two novels. Um, So again, thank you for this opportunity and I hope you enjoyed this short presentation. Thank you very much.